I'm the type of guy that gets stuck on an escalator because the power went out. So take what I say with a grain of salt, but we need to talk about the state of the console edition of Rust because we've got community servers that look like they might not be coming out this year. Fingers crossed they will. And a lot of people are betting on horses to fix things that they just won't fix. So this is sort of a reality check and me coming back to the console edition Rust to talk about what's going on and let people know that no, I haven't passed away. I haven't decided to quit the game. I'm still playing the console edition Rust. I still plan to play the console edition Rust. It's just right now Baldur's Gate 3 came out and it's a really good game. I didn't expect it to be this amazing. I'm loving it. I'm making some guides for that because I, I, just, I just make videos on the games that I love to play. And that's why I've been covering Rust for so long. It's a game that I really love and it's a game that I'm really passionate about. So here's what we're going to talk about first. Horses. Horses are coming to the console edition Rust in September. So this next wipe is going to be a blueprint wipe and horses are going to be dropped. You're also going to get road signs that can be destroyed and a few minor changes or major changes to some monuments. For instance, Satellite Dish is going to be the PC version of Satellite Dish now. It's not a huge change, but it does make things a little bit different and it does sort of freshen up the game, if you will. Big question is, is that enough? Are people going to be coming back for horses? And my guess is not really. Horses do add a nice element to the game, but the big element that they add there is it's quicker to get around. You can get from point A to point B a lot quicker. It doesn't add any actual content. What it does add is the ability to do more content in a wipe. It adds the ability to get around faster and get sort of more in in an hour. But I don't think this is necessarily going to draw players back because a lot of players have already sort of done all the content that's there. They're looking for new monuments. They're looking for new builds. They're looking for new sort of systems that they can use in the game. And horses doesn't add that. If you add something like cars, that's a whole new system. If you add camper vans, that's a whole new system. If you add something like underwater labs or you add the subway system or you add train cars or even add poker tables, those are whole new systems systems that players could use. And let's face it, even if you had poker tables, that's not really that much. But as you add all this stuff, that's a new system that players can use. It's a new sort of element of gameplay. It's something new for players to learn, and it's something new for them to sink time into. However, when it comes to horses, that's not really a new time sink thing. It's a pretty simple system. You go to the ranch, you buy a horse, or you find a horse out in the wild, you can put a horseshoe on to make the horses go faster, and then you can get from point A to point B faster. That's about it, unless you have dreams of becoming a shit farmer, which I don't think many people are looking to do. We get that enough in real life. But we're not here to talk about my porta potty expeditions. What we're here to talk about is horses. And while it does make it easier for players to get into the game, Rust is still a very hard game to get into. And the players who are already into the game are looking for new things to do. And horses, I don't think, are going to add that. It's a slight change to combat, right? You can get on a horse, you can get up to a player quicker, jump off and shoot them. That's the big thing that it adds. Combat when you're on a horse is complete. BS in my opinion. It's horrible and the state of the game right now is so laggy when you're on horses and they're going fast. You can't even really get accurate shots off anyways. So it just it just doesn't feel like anything to me. It feels like it's a nice system. I'm definitely going to take advantage of it because the fact that I can get more in an hour is great. So I think for some players who are looking to just keep playing the game and don't have all that much time, this is going to be good. This is going to make it so you can play a wipe and you don't have to be on every day for five hours a day. So the quest system, that's another thing that adds a component to the game that you can just get things done faster. And for those of you who don't know, this system is coming with the horses update. So yeah, the, it's going to be a lot easier to get into the game and get something done faster. If you're looking for a 20 minute PVP match, now you can have it in Rust. And if you're wondering how I did make a video on that, that's how to get guns fast. But yeah, you, you can you can do that now, and that's a really good thing, and I think that is going to open up the game to a few more players, but it's not going to bring back the activity that Rust needs, because when it comes to a Rust server, what you need is you need long-term players. You don't need players who are jumping in for 20 minutes. You need a good variety of players who are going to be playing the game a couple hours a day, or maybe at least 10 to 20 hours a week. And I don't think this update is going to really add too much for those players. The one thing that would add a lot for those players is community servers. And let's face it, when community servers drop, there's going to be a huge jump in the amount of players coming into Rust. So I think when they drop community servers, they need to drop some other stuff with it, right? Like, I hope my dream, the dream that I have is that when they drop community servers for the console edition Rust, with it, they're going to drop some new monuments. Hopefully something like military tunnels, they're going to drop something like underwater labs, and maybe even add in that subway or railway system. Just a lot of new stuff all at once with community servers, because what you want to do is you want the perfect storm. You want to get a lot of those sort of older players back into the game playing longer hours, and then you want to bring in the new players. And the way to bring in the new players is to, along with community servers, discount the game, right? So now all of a sudden, players who have played the game 
game before who like rust and are just looking for something new they're coming back because of the monuments players who left because of clans and all that they're coming back because of community servers and new players who are interested in the game are coming into it because there's a lot of hype going around around these two other classes of players. They're hearing about it. They look, they see there's a sale, and then they just impulse buy and decide to play the game. This is very important because right now, looking at the player base, I don't think they could actually support community servers. So this is something that's like a key component that I think a lot of people are missing out on when it comes to community servers. And yes, we're going to get into the delay later. So one of the key components that people are missing out on with community servers is you need the player base to be able to support community servers. If they release community servers and there's no one willing to buy them, no one's putting up community servers, it is going to be a complete and utter failure and it will kill the game. Guaranteed. If you put out community servers, nobody buys community servers. Every solo player, every duo player, every trio player who's holding out, hoping that they can fight against clans until community servers and they can get into their solo duo tree or whatever server... They're going to leave. They're going to say enough is enough. Community service came out. No one wants to support this game. No one wants to put the money in. I'm done too. And then you're going to be left with the clans and they're slowly going to die out too. And look, I think in my opinion, I think the console edition Rust is made for clans. I think that is one of the main sort of players that they're selling to because those are the players who tend to buy more skins. When it's a solo, they tend not to buy as many skins. They find a few that look cool and they're happy with it. With clans, there's that whole like keeping up with the Joneses element. People want the latest skins and there's a lot of just clan members who are just buying these new skins every week just to keep up with their teammates. So yeah, there's a lot of sort of influence around that. I know that like even when I was doing that whole Rust console village thing, I was more likely to buy skins because I'm like, hey, I can put something to cool up and then people around me can see it. I can, you know, give people a cool skin. I can give them cool gun skins and stuff like that. When I'm playing solo, I really don't care. I want a cool skin for you guys. I want you guys to be able to see cool stuff. But I, I like when I'm not sharing it with people, when I'm not getting the reaction of someone saying, oh, that skin looks sick, it, 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 you'll lose some of it. You'll lose some of the impulse to buy. So in my opinion, right now, Rust is surviving mainly off of skins and not off of sales. If you look at the stats, if you look at where it's sitting, it's got a core player base, which is good, but it doesn't have that many new players coming in. That leads me to conclude that the big thing supporting the game, the big thing supporting servers that are up now is skins because that's sort of what's paying the bills. So yeah, I, I think this game is geared towards clans, and I think it's always going to be that way. I think that's just sort of the nature of the beast. The thing is, though, if you lose the solo duo and trio players, if you lose enough of them, and there's not players jumping back and forth that are going to do, hey, I'm going to do a solo server, I'm going to try and get good, and then maybe I'll jump into the official servers and see if I can fight it out with the big dogs. If you don't have that element and players just start giving up, I think the game is just going to die off pretty slowly, but it will die off. Skins are going to keep people in the game because they've already, they, they feel like they've made that investment. They put that money in. It's in the skin. They've got it there. There's no way to get it out. So they just want to keep playing the game to justify their purchases. But that's only going to last so long. And I think community servers, that's going to be the make or break point. That's going to be where a lot of players are either going to double down and go hard or they're going to give up. And I think releasing community servers without any additional content is going to be a mistake. And I think even if they have to delay community servers into 2024, it's going to be worth it. In addition to this, one of the reasons I think community servers actually will be delayed is because we haven't really heard of any cool updates that are coming with community servers. And in addition to that, we have not seen any community server testing on the public testing branch. And I'd expect to see it by now. Maybe, maybe we're going to get something dropping in September. They're going to finalize in October and then November, December, we'll see community servers. But I think that is the best case scenario because they need to test this out. They need someone to be testing sort of that community server console they need someone to be testing just how everything works they need to have something on the public test branch where players can host their own servers and try out the commands right because if they release it without any testing if they just go through their own internal qa which would be quality assurance that someone who checks products and make sure everything's working it is going to be just like the launch of rust and not the pc version of rust i don't know even know how that was that game is old as and i wasn't playing it back then but it's going to be just like the release for the console edition, Rust. There's going to be huge hype around it. They're going to get all these people in, all this interest, and it's just going to die out because the game just doesn't work right. It's going to be the same with community servers, except it's going to be way more extreme. If people not only buy the game, but then they put in a $50, $60, $70 deposit, maybe even $100 to get that server for the month, and then the console just doesn't work. They, they get cheaters in. They can't kick people. They don't know how things work. They can't do the settings right. They say, hey, we're only doing a primitive server and someone can show up with an AK. It is going to go horribly wrong. People are going to demand their money back. 
And if they don't get their money back, they're just going to leave the game with a very sour taste in their mouth. And it's really hard to get people back when that happens. The perfect example of this is Cyberpunk. I think Cyberpunk is a perfect game. I loved it. I had such a great time with it, but I played it on the PC. The people who played it on the console, when I talk to them and I say, hey, like, it's a really good game, they shut that down instantly. They're like, Serial, how can you say it is a good game? It's in a horrible state. It sucks. It's just like... They just don't want to hear anything about it. And the fact is the game's gotten a lot better and it got better really quickly. Another game that's a perfect example of that is No Man's Sky. That was a game that I, I thought was going to be amazing. I bought a new laptop to play that game, played a little bit and I was just like, not for me, this sucks. And that was it. Never, never really went back to it. Don't care. Don't want to see it again. That's that. Maybe I will check it out because I've heard good things. But like... There's, that happens, and that's happened to Rust. That's happened to the console edition Rust. There are people out there who, because of the launch, will never pick up this game. And if they have another event like that for community servers, they're going to lose so many people who are right now playing the game. It's going to be a death sentence, I think. So, in my opinion, I think they need to test things out, and I think they know that. And I think because they know that, we're going to see a lot more testing going on on the public test branch before any of this happens. Now, when it comes to the public test branch, what can you expect as far as testing goes? My guess is they're right now working on this horses update. That's going to be coming out in September, which means community servers update. If that's what they do actually plan to release the, this year, if that's the next big update they plan to release along with whatever else they're adding in to go with it and bring players back, that is going to be sort of that first round of updates is going to come out mid-September. October, we're probably going to see some finalization of it. Best case scenario, November is when it's going to drop. If it doesn't hit in November, I'm guessing they're really going to try and push for December because missing this date after they set it is, again, that's going to be catastrophic for them. Like, you can't keep delaying community servers. It's been delayed over two years. This is ridiculous. At this point, community servers has been delayed longer than some games take to develop. Let that sink in. There are whole masterpieces that have been designed, developed, and dropped and the time it has taken to put out community servers, something that should be extremely easy because they're already hosting servers. These servers exist, right? They're used by the Rust. Like, it, it, they already exist. The code's already there. It exists for the PC. For the console version of Rust, they're already hosting servers. So, you know, there's some sort of software that allows them to do it. The fact that they can't just make some sort of software that works, some sort of, like, UI that players can use to set features and everything, especially when they said it was going to be released two weeks or a couple months after the game originally came out is horrendous. This is like, if they mess this up, if they, if they miss this date, or if they mess up community servers to the point that players just want refunds on the servers that they purchased, I think that's it. Because honestly, they, they need people to be paying for community servers. They need people to do that because that is going to bring a community back. That's going to allow community to form around these servers. And that's what's going to keep players sticking. When you just have official servers, you don't get the same sort of stickiness, if you will. You don't get the same sort of community because... With a community server, you're going to have a lot of players that are going to be sort of on the same Discord, talking to the same people, and that's going to help people stick around. It's going to increase playtime. It's going to increase the longevity of players, and it's going to increase how likely players are to leave, or in this case, it's going to decrease it because they're going to be less likely to leave. If, however, you get community servers, you get these groups forming, and it's a complete disaster, those groups are going to split up. People are going to blame the Rust developers for it, or the Rust console developers for it, D11, and that's going to be that. So... Yeah, I think community servers are going to get delayed. I'm guessing November, December, if everything goes perfectly and they've got everything in shape. But my guess is we're probably going to see it early 2024. What do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you hate me? Until next time, I'll probably see you in Baldur's Gate. Peace.